everyone, this is Jack. In this video, I'm going to cover how to plant and grow asparagus. I'm growing my asparagus from crowns, which is the most popular way of growing asparagus. Now, first you want to select the variety of asparagus you want to grow. You can grow New Jersey, you can grow Mary Washington. I'm growing Mary Washington asparagus. And the best time to plant asparagus crown is in early spring. Now, in order to grow asparagus, you have to prepare your ground right. Asparagus likes a lot of organic matter, it does not like weed competition, and it likes pH of 6.5 to 7.0. So if your soil is acidic, you need to amend your soil to raise the pH level to 7.0. The best way to do that is using wood ash or uh, ash from your fireplace, which is mostly basic in, in pH, and it also adds potassium and phosphorus to the soil as well. And now one of the most important factors in green asparagus, and as a matter of fact, any other plant, is the site selection. Now asparagus likes full sun and it likes soil that is well drained. So if you have sandy soil, you have no problem. You'll have lots of drainage. If you have clay soil, you'll have drainage issues. So you want to add compost into the clay soil to enhance more drainage and also all to add organic matter into the soil. Now compost also retains moisture as well in sandy soils. So you can add compost into sandy soils, add organic matter, which will help preserve moisture in the soil as well. So it works both ways. It helps to drain most of the uh, in excess water from clay soils and it helps to retain moisture in sandy soils. So compost does wonders in any situation. So always add compost into your ground to add organic matter into the soil, which encourages beneficial microbes, beneficial bacteria, fungi to develop and also feed your plants. Now site selection is even so more important in planting asparagus is because asparagus is a perennial. If you take care of asparagus, it'll last you 20 years. So the first year, you won't be able to harvest any asparagus shoots. The second year, you'll be able to get some. The third year, you'll start to get the regular harvest of asparagus. This is the area where we are growing asparagus. It's a pretty long bed. You need a lot of space to grow asparagus. I'm already tilled it. Now I need to amend my soil, mix it into the soil. And I already tilled it so that I can get rid of all the weeds. And asparagus likes loose soil and it does not like weed competition. So it's very important to first get rid of all the weeds. So now let's fill in some compost into the soil. I'm using the tractor to add compost to my asparagus bed. You can just use just wheelbarrow and a shovel and that works just as fine. I'm planting about 150 heads of asparagus. That's why I'm using these machines to actually plant all of my asparagus. This makes it much easier to plant on a larger scale. All right, the compost is in and the chickens are already at it. They love compost. They would like to pick all the, you know, pests and bugs from the compost. Now that all the compost is in, I'm going to spread it around on, in my asparagus bed. The general goal is that you want to get about two inches of compost in the bed you want to grow your asparagus in. So I'm going to spread it out and keep about two inches of compost all around my asparagus bed. I made a video on how you can make your own hot compost. Check the video out if you're interested. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Next, I'm adding a lot of ash into the ground as well. So there's compost and then there's also lots of ash. The ash is going to raise the pH level. It's going to make the soil more basic and also going to add more phosphorus and potassium to the soil as well. So ash is very important when adding uh, you know, nutrients to grow asparagus into your soil. Next, when everything is added, till the ground to mix everything evenly into your asparagus bed. So I got my Mary Washington asparagus crowns right here. Some of them already have little shoots on them, so it's time to plant them right away. So this is how the roots look like. They have quite a bit of extensive roots. So you want to get crowns that have lots of roots and they're very healthy. Before planting asparagus, dip the asparagus roots into water. This will hydrate the roots. So keep the crown out of the water and dip the roots into the water. Keep the roots submerged in water for one hour before planting. To plant asparagus crowns, dig a trench at least six inches deep and six inches wide. If you can dig a trench at least eight to 12 inches deep and eight to 12 inches wide, that's even better. It will allow a lot of loose soil for crowns and the roots to develop. Plant spacing in asparagus should be 18 inches apart and row spacing should be anywhere from three to four feet apart. Well, the trenches are almost done. 
We dug three trenches three feet apart and now it's time to plant asparagus right after we're done with the third row. Now to plant the asparagus crown, keep the crown right in the middle, fan out all the roots and keep the crown itself raised up. And we are going to put all the crowns in the rows 18 inches apart and then cover it up with soil. All right, asparagus has been planted. It was much harder to plant asparagus than I thought. Digging those trenches was hard. It took about three to four hours to plant 150 heads of asparagus. Now it's time to water. When watering, always keep the soil moist. Asparagus likes moist soil. It does not like to dry out and it does not like getting waterlogged either. So asparagus like really well-drained soil that keeps moisture as well. I made a separate video on how much and how often to water your plants, which depends on many factors such as your soil and your temperature. So check that video out if you're interested. After you're done planting, mulch your asparagus bed. This keeps the weeds down and also retains the moisture in the soil. Okay, that's all for planting asparagus. And our dog English Shepherd, Lily, has been helping us as well. And she's always waiting for me to throw the ball. So she's a really good dog. Some of the insects that attack asparagus are cutworms, beetles, turfs, aphids, and asparagus miners. Now you can get rid of all of these insects using neem oil and pure castle soap, and you also use PT spray and spinoset spray, along with some diatomaceous earth. Whoa, <laughs> well, somebody came to say hello. Now neem oil and pure castle soap gets rid of soft body insects. So it gets rid of aphids, it gets rid of white flies and such. Now. BD spray and spinosad spray gets rid of anything that is a worm or a cabbage worm and diatomaceous earth gets rid of anything that is a hard shell insect. So beetles on any hard shell insects, you know, diatomaceous earth is really good, really good with. The way diatomaceous earth works is that it curts the insects with the hard shell. So you can sprinkle diatomaceous earth around your plants or even on top of your plants. But if it gets wet, diatomaceous earth does not work. So always use it when you don't, you're not expecting any rain and you can get rid of beetles and hard shell insects that way as well. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you can grow lots of asparagus for 20 years to come and I'll see you in another video. And well, uh, say hello to subscribers as well. <laughs> this is a white crested black polish and we got these and they're absolutely amazing. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in another video.